Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to beat the 2.7 Spiral Abyss featuring the character Yulon. I will be trying to use more 4 star characters than 5 star characters and weapons for the future to make it more free to play friendly. Aside from Jean, she will always be on my team so I will be using her always in Spiral Abyss with her weapon. I will always try to feature the characters if I'm going to be rolling for them in the latest patch, future patch, whether it's a 4 star character, 5 star character, or a 5 star weapon in the Spiral Abyss. Okay, for the first team, we're going to bring Sucrose, Beidou, Yulon, and Lisa. And for the second team, we're going to be using Jean, Shengling, Amber, and Fischl. Okay, for team 1, first character we're going to be using is Sucrose. Weapon. Artifacts. Constellation 6, Talents, and her full stats. Second character will be using Beidou, Weapon, Artifacts, Constellation 6, Talents, and her overall stats. The third character is the future character Yulon. Weapon, Artifacts, Constellation 0, Talents, and her full overall stats. Last but not least, we're going to be using Lisa, Weapon, Artifacts, Constellation 1, Talents, and her full overall stats. Okay, for the second team, first character we're going to be using is a DPS Gene. Weapon. Artifacts. Constellation 4. Max Talons. And her full overall stats. Second character we'll be using is Sheng Ling. Weapon. Artifacts, Constellation 6, Talents, and her full overall stats. For her character, Amber, Weapon, Artifacts, Constellation 1, Talents, and her full overall stats. Last but not least, we'll be using Fischl, Weapon, Artifacts, Constellation 6, Talents, and her full overall stats. Okay, a quick rundown on the chamber enemies. For the first half, we're going to face the Electro Whopper Flower and the Cryo Whopper Flower for two waves. Then after the two, uh, two waves are done, we'll be facing two Geo Bishops. For the second half, we're going to be facing one Ruin Guard first, then after that, we're going to face a Ruin Grader. They both have a Geo Aura at the bottom of their feet, and they will summon an Earthquake at you, so watch out for that. Okay, for Chamber 2, we'll be facing two large Cryo Slimes. They have the shield on them, so we got to crack them. And we're going to be facing three Ice Shield Minotrolls on the first wave. Once we eliminate them, we will face one Frost Slime Lava Troll and one large Cryo Slime. The large crowd sign will have an aura at the bottom and it will summon a little cage. If you touch it, you will take damage and you'll be trapped in there for quite some time. The frost star lava Trail will have a coldness effect that will slow you down. And for the second half, it's just Mongo Kanki. Uh, for the final chamber, we're going to have two Bishop Hatchlings. This is basically a DPS check. And for the second half, we're going to be facing the Mechanical Array. As long as you eliminate the Bishop Hatchlings within 9.30 left to 9.10 on the clock, she will free start there's no problem. It is recommended you bring a hard high DPS like Hu Tao, Ganyu, Ayato, Ayaka, Shell, or the feature character Ito with a Geo team. Okay, for Chamber 1 first half, we're going to be facing three Whopper Flowers at the 12 o'clock position. So what you want to do is go to the 6 o'clock position so they'll dig towards you. Summon the Lisa Alt and run. use your elemental skills to tie them together. Use your Beto Alt and go to work right here. So once you run out of, of Sucrose Elemental Skills, summon the Yulon Alt and as you wait for the Elemental Skill 
cooldown to come up for Sucrose. Use the auto attack so Sucrose can apply Hydro damage to the enemies. So once you limit them, th there's going to be three new Whopper Flowers at the 6 o'clock position. So you should be close together when you uh, eliminate the first wave. And just rinse and repeat. Once you eliminate them, it's the two Geo Bishop characters. Just be careful, they can do a lot of damage if you don't have a shield on. Do note, we don't have a healer on this team, but the Beto shield is coming in handy right here. If they don't eliminate them fast enough, they will turn into one will turn into a cryo, one will turn into an electro. Okay, for the second half, so for, for the first wave, it's just one rune guard. So what I do is try to target the rune guard's uh, eye, but I missed there again. So once you knock him down, use your amber alt, visual alt, shungling alt, and basically go to work here and alt DPS the rune guard. This floor does have a cryo on it, so it will apply cryo to the enemies and they will resist damage towards you. So once you eliminate the Rune Guard, it's going to be a Rune Greater at the 6 o'clock position. It's basically the same thing. Just watch out for the Geo, Geo Aura on the Rune Guard and the Rune Greater. It will summon like an Earthquake on you and that will do a lot of damage. Do note, if you do have plenty of time left, try to get your ultimates up for the next fight. And there you go, 3 stars on Chamber 1. We're going to move on to the Chamber 2 now. Okay, for Chamber 2, you're going to be facing 3 Crowl military Shields and 2 large Crowl Signs for the first wave. So once you start the challenge, go to the 6 o'clock position, summon the Beto, use her elemental skill parry to stop the charging attacks. You want to go to the 6 o'clock position so you can group the military together. So once, the, once they're both all grouped together, use your ultimates, use the Lisa ult or whatever ultimates that you have left left on. So once you limit them, it's one Cryo Lava Troll and one large Cryo Slime. They both have the Cryo Aura at the bottom, which is a kind of a pain because the, the Lava Troll has a Cryo Slow effect and the Cryo Slime has the Ice Trap. If you touch the Ice Trap, you will take damage. If you get stuck in there and they're going to do a Wombo Combo, you're most likely going to get either really hurt or you're going to uh, faint. So what I like to do is basically try to go after the Cryo Lava Troll because I find he's the most pain in the butt one. Do note, if you're struggling on this level, like I highly recommend bringing a Pyro team to this level because I don't have Pyro on this team, but my team is pretty strong enough to not have Pyro. Okay, for the second half, it's the Mago Kenki. So, you basically gotta wait for him to get up. You can, like, do elemental skills to get some particles as well. It, he basically it takes about 11 seconds for him to get up. So once he gets up, pull all everything and just basically go to work. So once you take him down to at least 80% HP, he will be invulnerable for a couple seconds, so you can't hurt him. So once he goes to that charging attack, just back off. So the key is he does teleport a lot, so you want to try to manipulate the teleport, so try to stay in front of him because he'll always teleport behind. Once he's about to do like those charge attacks. If you do have ultimates, you can iframe it or you can do a perfectly timed dodge. Mago Kenki is pretty random, so he will teleport just randomly for no reason. So this, it might take some time to eliminate him, but he is probably the most frustrating spiral of this boss because I, he has the most RNG. 
Like I said, try to stay in front of him, and he'll just tower behind. And there you go, three stars on chamber two, and on to the final one. Okay, for the first chamber, first half, it's two bishop hatchlings. They'll be spawning at the 12 o'clock position, so what you want to do is summon the Yulon and chain them together to get that Hydro effect. Summon the Beetle so she can counter that, and use your Yulon ult, or use any ult that you have left. And just basically go to work with Sucrose, auto attack, get that Hydro effect on them. This is just basically a DPS check. They're not as tanky. So try to eliminate them fast so you can have a lot of time against the mechanical array. For the final boss, it's the Mechanical Array. What you want to do is basically just summon every ultimate that you have as it's spawning. The Mechanical Array does have this move that goes up in the air, so you're unable to hit it. So only characters like Amber Alt and Zhang Liu can hit it. Like that. When it goes up in the air. If you do plan on using Jean DPS for this, she can miss the Mechanical Array for some odd reason when she auto attacks. As you can see, I did a little bit of charge attacks here and there, because it does hit, but sometimes her normal auto attacks does miss. So once you take it down to at least half HP to 60% HP, you should have a high chance of freestarting this, no problem. So the Mechanical Ray does have another form, it goes into that shield form, and you gotta eliminate one of these ruined def defenders. Go after the one that has an aura, because you have to target that to break the mechanical ray shield. Once again, I highly recommend bring a high DPS like Utao, Ganyu, Ayato, Ayaka, or the future character Ito with a Jill team. This should make life a lot easier for you if you use those characters. So once you eliminate the ruined defender that has the aura, go to the mechanical array and DPS it. It will get up, and it will be invulnerable for a couple seconds, like that. So basically just wait, and go to work here. Always keep rotating your characters to get their elemental skills as well. And there we go, 3 stars on the final chamber. That's 9 stars. Thank you for watching, and have a good day everyone.